It's a forensic detectives. I'm Dr. Koji, gas meter, gas detector. And today we're talking about what do we need to detect carbon dioxide and what is carbon dioxide? Folks, carbon dioxide is a gas that occurs naturally in the fresh air, in the outdoor air, in the indoor air, folks. CO2 carbon dioxide and it's a very ubiquitous gas because it's everywhere around us we cannot avoid it folks so much so that we actually expel when we exhale high amounts of carbon dioxide now in the natural environment there is about four to five hundred parts per million of carbon dioxide now when we close the room and we breathe, we're increasing that carbon dioxide because we're exhaling higher amounts of carbon dioxide than what we breathe in. That's why it's important to make sure we have fresh air always coming into the indoor spaces at work, at home, so that we are continuously negating the increased accumulative effects of our exhalation. Folks, that's why carbon dioxide with regards to indoor air quality monitoring is very important. Now, let me give you a quick demonstration. Dr. Koz here has a handheld carbon dioxide monitor. This guy is detecting the ambient carbon dioxide levels you can see it's about six to 700. Now, if I start bringing this closer to my mouth, it's picking up the higher levels of carbon dioxide that I'm breathing and bang, it triggered the alarm. The alarm here is set at 1000 parts per million. And you could see what's going on. You could see that the high amounts of carbon dioxide from my exhalation has triggered the carbon dioxide detector, folks. Now, that's why it's important at home, at work, at school, to make sure we have good fresh air. Good fresh air, that means we are letting fresh air, which is low levels of carbon dioxide, into the room, into the indoor space, to dilute the high amounts of carbon dioxide that's accumulating due to many people or one person being in a room, just like this one over here, folks. Now, high levels of carbon dioxide is not good. It makes us feel fatigued. It makes us feel nauseous. And there are many academic studies that show it does not make us concentrate quite well. So that's why it's important for schools, good air quality for our students at their schools, high school, middle school, elementary school is important so that they can focus and concentrate. Otherwise, if they do not have good air quality, studies have shown that their concentration lapses, folks. Very, very important. Now, the next question that's very common is what's the difference between carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide? Carbon monoxide is CO and carbon dioxide is CO2. CO versus CO2. Now, carbon monoxide is a deadly toxic gas, folks. 1,000 ppm of carbon monoxide will kill us. 1,000 of ppm of carbon dioxide will not kill us, as you just saw. So that's the big difference. The toxicity of carbon monoxide is much, 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 much more deadly, folks. Much more deadly. However, there are some similarities. The similarities are that they sound similar. Many people get them confused. And they also are emitted by combustion sources. That's why people get confused. Oh, I'm getting carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide coming out of my car. Yes, both of them are byproducts of combustion. So they do come out of an exhaust pipe from your vehicle, from your boiler, from your heater, from your stovetop as you're cooking. Both are emitted as combustion byproducts. The second similarity is that both gases are odorless. Both gases are tasteless. Both gases are fairly inert, which means they stabilize in the air and they hang around, folks. So they also have very similar physical properties in that respect. Thirdly, although carbon monoxide is much, 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 much more toxic and deadly, high levels of carbon dioxide is also not good for us. It's also not good. So both gases at high levels is deadly especially for carbon monoxide, and it's toxic for the human body, folks. So that's another reason why folks and many people, many customers we see, and many blogs and people are talking here and there are also confusing carbon monoxide with carbon dioxide. How do we detect 
Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide gas is detected with an NDIR. Carbon dioxide sensor. NDIR stands for non-dispersive infrared sensor. And simply what that means is that we have a sensor element that throws out infrared light and it's absorbed by carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a very stable molecule, folks. It doesn't interact with many chemical reactions where we could make an electrochemical cell or some other type of novel type of gas sensor. So the best way to detect carbon dioxide is with infrared electromagnetic spectrum rays. That's the way we do it, folks. And they absorb the infrared light and we could deduce how much is absorbed and correlate that the concentration of carbon dioxide that exists in the air. And we place those sensors in a detector just like this. We calibrate the unit to government NIST standards of carbon dioxide to make sure it's accurate. And then we have a detector that displays you the PPM of carbon dioxide that exists in the air for The next question is, how useful is carbon dioxide? Now, carbon dioxide has many, many uses in our modern day life, folks. Now, we use carbon dioxide in various agricultural situations to help promote growth of various plants and agricultural products, folks. It's very important for growing our crops. The second application is the beverage industry. Who likes seltzer? Who likes sodas? Guess what? Carbon dioxide is within those products and it gives us the fizz, as you probably know. And we need to control the amount of carbon dioxide that goes in and also monitor the surroundings of those facilities to make sure there's no carbon dioxide leaks because we don't want our workers breathing in elevated levels of carbon dioxide. The third is welding and industrial situations. Carbon dioxide is a low cost, very abundant inert gas. It's perfect for providing an inert environment when you're welding to make sure those welds a high purity, are not oxidized, and when they're not oxidized, it means you're gonna get a good weld. So carbon dioxide is also used in those situations. And guess what? It's also used in refrigeration, fire suppression, and many pharmaceutical and laboratory situations. Now, what's the difference between a carbon monoxide detector and a carbon dioxide detector? Typically, in your home, you may already have a carbon monoxide detector. It may look something like this. It's usually white. It usually has a display, and you pop it on your ceiling, on your wall to protect you. It may be a state a county or a city requirement that you have this or your landlord must provide one for you. This protects us from death, folks. It protects us from high levels of accumulated carbon monoxide in our homes. Typically, you will not find a carbon dioxide monitor in your home. Sometimes they are included in air quality measurement systems that control your HVAC system in your building at work or in industrial situations, but very rarely would you find a carbon dioxide detector in a home. But I tell you what, they are getting more popular. We are selling many carbon dioxide monitors to many people for home applications so people can understand what type of CO2 levels they have in their homes. And if it gets too high, they crack open the door, crack open a window, folks. So we are seeing that increase, but by no uh, degree is it as popular as a carbon monoxide detector that you have to protect you from this deadly gas. The next question I get is, Dr. Kaz, what are the correct CO2 levels that I should be breathing in? Now, there are various organizations out there that surmise and recommend various CO2 levels for the indoor space. Now, ASHRA, ASHRA is an organization that provides recommendations for indoor air quality and they recommend 1,000 parts per million. Now, I've got my carbon dioxide monitor here. I'm breathing in this small room. I've got about 600 or so parts per million of carbon dioxide. If it gets to 1,000, then that means I need to crack open a window and improve the air quality, improve the freshness of air coming from the outside in into this area, folks. Very, very important. Now, there are other folks that recommend different levels. OSHA has a 5,000 ppm limit. 
Drowsiness onset is about 1% or 10,000 parts per million, so on and so forth, folks. And I have a nice table that you could see the various associations and government agencies providing their recommendations to CO2. But my personal opinion is I'm a fairly conservative guy. I want to make sure my children, my grandparents, and my wife is breathing the best, best air. And I take it as about 1,000 parts per million. It's an easy number to remember. It's an easy round number. So anything over 1,000 parts per million, I usually like to improve my air quality. I hope you like that, folks. Be well, be safe, and see you soon.